Hello friends, today we would be doing the identification of ferric ions. First of all, we inspect the solid salt, then we will be preparing the original solution and we will oxidize the original solution with concentrated nitric acid. On inspection of the solid salt, you can see that it is reddish brown in color with overlying moisture because of water absorption. Now we are preparing the original solution. The original solution is prepared by dissolving the solid salt in distilled water. Here I have taken the solid salt and now I am adding distilled water into it. You can see that the salt dissolves immediately in water. Even though it is said to be the ferric ions, sometimes there may be ferrous ions. So we will oxidize it with concentrated nitric acid and so that all the ferrous ions are converted to ferric ions. Nitric acid is a very good oxidizing agent and it converts all the Fe2 plus to Fe3 plus. So this is what we saw in the previous videos. The iron 3 salt appears as a reddish brown powder and on adding concentrated nitric acid to OS it gets oxidized to ferric form. Now we add the group reagent. Iron 3 plus and aluminium ions belong to group 3 and the group reagent is ammonium hydroxide in solid ammonium chloride. We first gently heat the solution to warm it. After cooling it, we will be adding solid ammonium chloride. Then we mix the content so that the ammonium chloride dissolves in it. The next step is to add the ammonium hydroxide solution. Now we are going to add the ammonium hydroxide. Observe that on adding the ammonium hydroxide there is formation of a reddish brown precipitate. Add the ammonium hydroxide until the solution smells of ammonia which means all the acid has reacted away and all the ammonia has reacted with the salt. The reddish brown precipitate is iron 3 hydroxide. Any precipitate formed on adding ammonium hydroxide confirms the presence of group 3. The reddish brown color points towards ferric ions. Now we will dissolve this precipitate in dilute hydrochloric acid and divide the solution into two parts. We will be taking the precipitate formed in the previous procedure and we will be adding dilute hydrochloric acid. You can observe that on adding hydrochloric acid, the reddish brown colored precipitate starts to dissolve slowly and the previous yellow color is reobtained. Now you can see that the precipitate has completely dissolved and the solution has turned clear yellow in color. Now we divide the solution into two parts and to the first part we will be adding potassium thiocyanate and to the second part we add potassium ferrocyanide. This is the solution we obtained by dissolving the precipitate. Now we are dividing that solution into two parts. We take equal amount of this solution in two separate test tubes so that we can do the two separate confirmatory tests. To the first test tube, I am adding potassium thiocyanate solution. You can see that on adding the potassium thiocyanate, there is formation of a blood red color. To the second part of the solution, I am adding potassium ferrocyanide. You can observe the formation of a Prussian blue colored precipitate or rather a colloidal solution. The potassium thiocyanate reacted with the ferric ions forming ferric thiocyanate which has blood red color. This is used in the classical fake blood experiment. The potassium ferrocyanate reacted with the ferric ions forming ferric ferrocyanate which is 
Prussian blue in color.